when you ask for a sign to confirm that something is a good idea, then you're still not clear. You're not 100% in that vibration of this is what I want to do and I'm going to make it happen. And so I'm telling you, as soon as you outsource, you are not clear. You're basically outsourcing your desires to the universe saying, just give me whatever and I'll just be okay with it. Hi my loves and welcome back to another video. I'm Deanna and today I wanted to talk about the top reasons as to why people don't get what it is that they want and ask for. The number one reason as to why the law of attraction or your manifestation tool is not working is because you are not clear about what it is that you want. Now this can play out in multiple ways, but one being that most people have a plan B and sure your rational left brain could say, well, it's smart to have a plan B or you need an exit strategy or you need a backup of source. But in the moment that you do that, you're basically saying in case shit happen, if this doesn't work out, I can always do this. And then plan A becomes less potent. Plan A is what you want, is what you're going for, is what you're striving for. It should be the put all your eggs in this basket. And if you have a plan B, it's like, well, you know, this we, it could work out and I really want it to, but you know, if it doesn't, we'll make this work. For a lot of people, they want a backup, they want security. It's one of the main reasons why people love talking about traveling more so than they actually travel. It's why they talk more about pursuing a business or doing something they want to do because talking about it is a lot easier than actually doing it. Because doing it means uncertainty. I'm jumping out into something that I don't know what is. I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know what it's going to play out like. I know what I have right here and it's pretty comfortable. Like, sure, I would like something different, but at least I know what I have here. I know the people that I have with me. I know what kind of money I'm bringing in. Out there, that, that's a hell of a lot of uncertainty and I'm not really sure I'm ready for that. That's really what goes on in the mind, consciously or subconsciously, for people that don't pursue their dreams. It's very likely because A, you're not 100% clear on what you want or it's too scary and you have too much energy in plan B. Now the other reason is that a lot of people say that they can't. They want something but they can't because so and so followed by an immaculate story. Now what you're saying when you say you can't is basically you won't. I can't walk on water. Well, you know, Jesus could. Just saying. Where there is a will, there is a way. And so for a lot of people to keep it more down to earth, it's a matter of, it's just a default. Oh, I want to take this trip, but I don't have enough money, so I can't. I'm telling you that you can. If you really want to, you can get really creative. You can start calling in the money because you want to, but most people don't even allow themselves to think about what it is that they want because it's easier to just say, I can't, I don't have the money. Guess it's not going to work out. It's not meant to be. Now, this type of spiritual bypassing, I hear so often. When people say, oh, I'm going to put it out to the universe. I'm going to put it out there and if it's meant to happen, it will happen. Well, what if it's only meant to happen if you make it happen? You're basically outsourcing your desires to the universe saying, just give me whatever and I'll just be okay with it. So if I don't go, it's not meant to be. If I go, it's meant to be. That means I don't have to take responsibility for what I want and I don't have to be disappointed in case I don't get what it is that I want. So I'm saying take back that responsibility claim what it is that you want. Be okay with, yeah, sure, sometimes it doesn't really work out how and when and why I want it, but that doesn't mean that something better couldn't come out of it. But as soon as you say, I can't, you're shutting down for all possibilities and you're denying your any kind of responsibility that may come with it. When it comes to saying that I can't, what if you stop saying that. What if you stop letting that be the first immediate response to anything that you really want to do, but at this very moment can't? What if you said, okay, let me see if I can borrow some money. Maybe have a friend that's willing to lend me some money. That's basically what happened to me. Um, seven years ago, I was going through a really rough depression. I hadn't been working for a year. I was living in Denmark. I had to move out of my apartment. I had no money whatsoever. I wanted to take this trip to America and everyone told me, 
you're insane, you don't have any money, you should stay at home, you should get a new job, you should save up, and then when you have the money and it's a better time, then you can do it. And because otherwise you're gonna take this trip, you're gonna be in debt, you're gonna come home broke, and man, the list of projections of possible shit that could happen was endless. And sure, my left brain would probably say, yeah, you know, I should wait and I should save up and then at some point it will be a better time. But I wanted to go on this retreat and I ended up calling the richest friend I knew, lives in Dubai, and I was like, hey, I really want to take this trip and I would greatly appreciate it if you would lend me some money. And he did. And so I borrowed that money, I took this trip and guess what? It's been seven years. I'm still in America, I did not go home, I didn't end up living with my parents again, broke and unemployed and all the things in between that was predicted because I took a chance and I followed my heart. I knew I had to go and so I found a way. I, I got the first couple of friends that I asked, including my parents, said no, they thought it was reckless. It was like the dumbest thing I could possibly do to them. And now today that friend told me that that's possibly the best money he ever lent to someone because of what came out of it. It was a, like for me a completely new life in America with, I mean, I got married, fell in love, now I live here. <laughs> if you're an OC, OG subscriber, you, you know the story. But my point is I didn't take no for an answer even though I was in the midst of some really challenging things. I had three weeks to figure it all out, move out of my apartment, borrow money, get a visa, all the things, but I wanted it and so I made it happen. That's my point. When you say you can't, it's really because you don't want to put in the effort, which is okay. Just be honest with yourself. Is it because you can't or because you won't? And so the other thing I wanted to get to us why we don't get what we want is because we outsource things to the universe. And so it's basically something that I run into a lot when I've done readings for people. Am I supposed to do this? Am I supposed to go here? Am I supposed to be with this person? Is my marriage going to work out? Is my, like, is this relationship, like, should I go into this relationship? Should I not? And with all of these questions and with anything such as card readings or psychic or intuitives, it becomes this outsourcing of desires. So I really always encourage people to ask that question for themselves. What do you actually want? Regardless of what any readings or cards may say, what do you want? Because most people don't even allow themselves to ask themselves that question. And that's what I want people to do. So to regain the power in a sense and not outsource it to anyone else, ask yourself that question. What do you want? Like I said, it goes back to the very first thing. People are not clear about what it is that they want and so that's why the major reason why people don't get it is because they're not clear about it. So sure, you can, you can look at readings, you can look at, well, what would happen if you did this? That's a different question. What would happen if I went into a relationship with this person? What would happen if I moved to this location? Those are very different questions than what am I supposed to do what it like where am i supposed to go the question should be where do you want to go and that should be for yourself and so i encourage you to ask that question for yourself to take back your decision making in a way and ask yourself that question and see what might come up for you so next time that you feel tempted to outsource this uh oh should i take this trip I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask for a sign if it's in my best interest to take this trip. Asking for signs is like one of the most ridiculous things we can do in my perspective because not only is there a voice recognition in your phone and ads are being shown that you know fits whatever you've been searching for, whatever you're talking about, it shows up on your phone. So unless it's actually like you're driving by something, just watch out for signs on your phone and computers and stuff like that. The other thing is when you ask for a sign to confirm that something is a good idea, then you're still not clear. You're not 100% in that vibration of this is what I want to do and I'm going to make it happen. And so I'm telling you, as soon as you outsource, you are not clear, okay? So how can you be clear? You ask yourself those questions and you get clear with the answer. Sometimes it's like, yeah, I don't really know because um, maybe I'm scared that this is gonna work out this way or I'm scared it's gonna work out that way. That's fear. 
That's a completely different element that should not be involved in the decision making, okay? We're gonna make a different video about that. But for the sake of this, be clear. Ask yourself, what do you want? And don't outsource things, okay? Those are some of the main reasons as to why people don't get what it is that they want. And so sometimes it's also a matter of stating what you want and then getting yourself out of the way. Don't force things. That's why you see law of attraction really working a lot better with smaller things. It's like, oh, let's just, you know, talk about bats or I hear something about bats, which actually happened to me the other day. And I have zero uh, attachment to bats, but all of a sudden, that started showing up and incredibly powerful. But when we have no resistance, it's easier for smaller things to manifest. And that's why bigger things sometimes don't always happen because we're more attached to it working out. Like we want it to, we need it to. And so when we hold on to that energy and that needy desire for something to work out, it doesn't come to us. And so getting yourself out of the way and allowing that vibration to basically just blossom and come into your life that's a different element but i am happy to make a different video about more specific law of attraction stuff and how to really manifest with it and how to state what you desire and then get yourself out of the way in a sense to allow things but yes i will leave that for another video so if you want that leave me a note below and also if you enjoyed this video make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because we make magical videos on all kinds of fun topics around here so if you stick around you might start to see the magic unfold and also i love you and i will see you very soon